We'll begin with a reading from the fourth book of Kings. And Elias took his mantle and folded it together and struck the waters, and they divided hither and thither, and they both passed over on dry ground. And when they were gone over, Elias said to Eliseus, Ask what thou wilt have me do for thee, before I be taken away from thee. And Eliseus said, I beseech thee that in me may be thy double spirit. And he answered, Thou hast asked a hard thing, nevertheless, if thou see me when I am taken from thee, thou shalt have what thou hast asked. But if thou see me not, thou shalt not have it. And as they went on, walking and talking together, behold, a fiery chariot and fiery horses parted them both asunder. And Elias went up a whirlwind into heaven. And Eliseus saw him and cried, My father, my father, the chariot of Israel and the driver thereof. And he saw him no more. And he took hold of his own garments and rent them into two pieces. And he took up the mantle of Elias that fell from him. And going back, he stood on the bank of the Jordan River, and he struck the waters with the mantle of Elias that had fallen from him, and they were not divided. And Eliseus said, Where is now the God of Elias? And he struck the waters, and they were divided hither and thither, and Eliseus passed over. Again, those are words taken from the fourth book of Kings. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. Amen. Janine Deckers was born in the year 1933 in the country of Belgium. Janine Deckers was baptized and raised in the Catholic faith by her good Catholic parents, who happened to own a small pastry shop. As a young girl, Janine went off to Catholic schools, and she developed a great love for guitar music, as well as a deep devotion and a great desire to become a consecrated religious, a sister. After attending university and having a very short teaching career, Janine Deckers eventually entered into the Missionary Dominican Sisters headquartered in the city of Waterloo. And there she took the religious name Sister Luke Gabriel. Once she got to the convent, Deckers wrote, sang, and performed many of her own songs, which were so well received by her fellow nuns and convent visitors that her religious superiors asked that she actually record an album, an album that people could purchase either at the convent religious bookstore or at other local outlets. Now, perhaps the Mother Superior felt that such a record album might be part of a new evangelization, a way of making the elevated life of nuns just a little bit more down to earth, so as to help relate to the world more. Whatever the case may be, there was no doubt that there would be a potential increase of income for the convent. And so in 1961, the album was recorded in Brussels, and one particular song from the record was entitled Dominique, and it became an international smash hit. Dominique, a song about Saint Dominic the Great Friar, was the first and remains the only Belgian song to be a number one hit single on the pop charts of the United States. In 1962 alone, the album sold over two million copies, and a star was born in the person of Sister Luke Gabriel. And she became an international celebrity, and she decided to take a stage name. She became known as Sister Smile as part of promoting her work. She would even appear on the famous Ed Sullivan show during the Second Vatican Council. And Hollywood even saw an opportunity to take advantage of this singing nun. And they actually made a movie starring Debbie Reynolds called The Singing Nun. It seemed as if the new Pentecost was so near. 
a new springtime was finally arrived as a supposedly old and dusty and outdated church finally opened up her windows to let in a little fresh air and perhaps a little smoke of Satan as well. See, it didn't take long. It didn't take long before the star, Sister Luke Gabrielle, fell to earth in a tragic end. She ended up leaving the convent and leaving the religious life. She took off her black veil, which signified that she was dead to this world, and she returned to the ways of the world. Janine removed her religious habit, her sign of consecration, her sign of election, her sign of salvation. She removed the scapular of her Dominican habit, that sleeveless cloth that hangs over the shoulders of many consecrated religious people. Janine went back to the world naked and unarmed. She hoped to continue her musical career, but she could never recapture the intention of the audiences now that she had taken off her religious habit. You see, Janine had served her purpose, and now she was largely forgotten. And as a result, Sister Gabrielle, now returned to the world as Janine Deckers, became bitter and even more revolutionary in her thinking. Janine was increasingly frustrated at the supposed failure to implement fully the reforms of the Second Vatican Council. She even released a song in 1967 defending the use of contraception. The song was called Glory Be to God for the Golden Pill. Despite her public rejection of the moral teaching of the commandments, Janine did have one brief successful career and came back to the Catholic stage briefly. In 1973, Janine Deckers became involved in what is called the Catholic Charismatic Renewal. A major leader of that movement and a big supporter of the spirit of the council, namely Cardinal Sunens, requested that Janine write special songs for the movement that could be performed before Catholic audiences. Once again, the star was born, and she became known again as Sister Smile, and she released another album. But her newfound fame was short-lived. Janine not only suffered a nervous breakdown, followed by two years of psychotherapy, but she also entered into a perverse relationship. Janine and her partner committed suicide by an overdose of barbiturates and alcohol in March of 1985. In their suicide note, Decker and her partner stated that they had not given up their faith and they wished to be buried together in a full Catholic church funeral. Their request was granted, thus compounding the tragedy. Janine had been elected chosen by God to be a bride of Christ. But she seemingly lost her way, preferring to wed a fallen world. Mount Carmel. Mount Carmel in the Holy Land was the dwelling place of the great prophet known as Elias, as well as the spiritual sons of the prophet who were his disciples. Tradition tells us that prayerful, prayerful contemplative prophets continued to dwell on Mount Carmel in the Holy Land up until the very proclamation of the Holy Gospel. It is said that these holy men immediately accepted the way of Christ. And furthermore, these men were the first disciples with true devotion to the Blessed Virgin Mary. And that included erecting a chapel in her honor upon the very mount known as Mount Carmel. Of course, as many of us know, it was St. Simon Stock who received the brown scapular directly from the hands of the Blessed Virgin Mary. St. Simon Stock was born in 1164 AD of an illustrious family in England. 
At only 12 years old, he left the world, and he went to live in a forest. And there he practiced all sorts of penances, penances that were practiced by the ancient church fathers and desert fathers from early days. A hollow space in an oak tree became his dwelling place. The water which trickled from the rocks became his drink. Herbs and roots were his only food. His occupation for 20 years was simply prayer and penance. But after this time of preparation, our Lord and Our Lady would then choose Simon for a great role in the plan of human salvation. It is said that two English noblemen returned from the Holy Land and brought with them two religious friars from Mount Carmel. Simon was greatly moved by their piety, especially towards the Queen of Heaven. And he joined these Carmelite friars. And six years later, he was appointed the superior general of their order. And on July 16th, in the year 1251 A.D., a date that we should remember, Simon Stock complained to Our Lady of all the persecutions waged against his Carmelite order, which seemed to be on the point of falling apart. And then with tears, with tears in his eyes, he begged the Blessed Virgin to not forsake his religious family, which she had taken under her patronage, but rather to give it some sign that she cared, some sign of her maternal protection. The Most Holy Virgin, enveloped and encompassed by a halo of heavenly light, appeared to St. Simon Stock. And she presented him with a brown scapular and said the following, quote, My son, receive this scapular as a sign of the privilege which I have obtained for thee and for the children of Carmel. Whosoever should die, listen carefully, who shall ever die invested with this habit shall be preserved from the fire of hell. Our Lady continued, It is a sign of salvation. It is a safeguard against danger. It is a special pledge of peace and protection. Unquote. The saint, Simon, stock, full of joy, showed the precious gift he had received, not only for the Carmelite order, but for the entire Christian world. Now, true love is not a feeling. True love is not simply some passion or emotion. No, true love is a choice. In Latin, one of the words for love is delectio, from which we get the word election, where a candidate, an individual, is elected, chosen from all others, and Our Lady chooses because she loves us. She chooses to clothe her special followers with her garment. And yes, since love is a choice, countless individuals have responded by choosing to wear the brown scapula as a sign of salvation, promise of eternal life, a pledge of special protection, a promise that you will be preserved from eternal hellfire. True love is a choice. And realize that our dearest Lord and Our Lady loved us first. And that we must choose to love them in return. As many of us know from reading the Holy Bible, Mount Carmel was a place of choosing. It was a place of decision. A location where a choice was made. In the Old Testament, the prophet Elias summoned the unfaithful and idolatrous people of Israel to come to Mount Carmel to witness a contest between Yahweh, the true God, and the false god, Baal. It was a contest between the prophet Elias, the prophet of the Most High, and 450 false prophets of a false god. 
the people of God, Israel, would have to choose, because true love is a choice. They would have to choose between Yahweh or Baal. They would have to choose either the city of God or they would choose the city of man. You want to choose life or do you want to choose death? You want to choose heaven or do you want to choose hell? Elias, great prophet, the Bible tells us, turned towards Israel and cried out, How long are you going to sit on the fence? How long are you going to straddle the issue? If the Lord is God, follow him. If Baal is the true God, follow him. But the Bible says that the people of Israel did not answer Elias. They didn't choose. And so Elias called for a test. Let's do a competition. Elias called for two young bulls to be placed on two different altars. One altar dedicated to the true God, Yahweh, and another altar to the false god, Baal. And the competition was this. The God who sent down fire from heaven to consume the bull, that God who caused his own holocaust, his whole burnt offering, that would be the true God. And Israel agreed to this competition. The false prophets began the competition first. They offered their worthless prayers throughout the entire day. They danced and cut themselves, pleading for fire from the heavens. Elias, seeing that nothing was happening, began to taunt the false prophets, suggesting that their god, Baal, was perhaps resting or in retirement. Perhaps he was sitting on the john. But despite all their prayers, no one answered because no one was listening. But with just one prayer from the mouth of the prophet Elias, the Most High sent down fire and consumed the offering of the bull in the entire altar. And seeing this divine holocaust, the people finally chose. They fell prostrate and they said, the Lord is God, the Lord is God. Modern man, by and large, is sitting on the fence and he's straddling the issue. Like Janine Decker's, many are flirting with Baal and they have chosen the ways of the world. We have been unfaithful, even idolatrous. Many are on the verge of hellfire. They're stuck in Babylon instead of coming out of her. And very few people are crying out with the prophet Elias, with zeal have I been zealous for the Lord God of hosts. But Mount Carmel is a place of decision. A location that demands that someone make a choice. For true love is a choice. Who will choose to wear the brown scapular? Who will choose to wear the garment of Our Lady as a sign of their salvation? Who will choose to wear the scapular to preserve them from eternal hellfire? Who will utterly reject Baal and fall prostrate before the Lord and cry out, The Lord is God. Who will come out of Babylon, the city of man, and who will climb Mount Carmel until we ascend to the city of God in heaven itself? Do we need proof of Yahweh's power? Do we need to see fire from heaven in order to make a choice? In the lesson I read to open this conference on the brown scapular, I read to you from the fourth book of Kings. And it is said that Elias ascended into heaven in a fiery chariot. And the Holy Bible then adds that Elias let his woolen mantle, his scapular, if you will, fall into the hands of the prophet Eliseus. Overflowing with gratitude, St. Eliseus hastened to pick up the woolen mantle. It was a relic of his master. 
It was the habit of Elias the prophet, the founder of Mary's Carmelite order, ultimately. And this action of the prophet Elias, namely giving his brown woolen mantle to another, prefigures the action of Mary, who would later let her mantle of salvation, her brown scapular, fall into the hands of St. Simon Stock when her religious children were in dire need. Presenting us her scapular, her garment. Mary gave us herself. In the preface prayer for a special Mass in honor of Our Lady of Mount Carmel, Holy Church sings these wondrous words, quote, Through the Holy Scapular, Mary has taken to herself sons of choice. Mary has taken to herself sons of choice. She has chosen us. Our Lady has chosen those who will wear her garment. Because true love is a choice. As a mother belongs to her children, so the Blessed Mother belongs to us. When a woman becomes a mother, she becomes a nurse and a protector of her child, and thus she belongs to her child. And so too, in the very act of taking us under her mantle to pledge and promise our salvation, we see Mary giving herself, opening her arms out to us. She becomes our nurse. She becomes our protector. Whosoever dies under her mantle will be saved. The brown scapular is a relic of the Blessed Mother. It is Mary's garment, and it is her instrument, her vehicle of a promise that she infallibly made. It is Mary's holy habit. It is a sign of our consecration, our being set aside for her, and it's a sign of our being chosen, and we've chosen her in return. When a priest enrolled me in the brown scapular many years ago, the priest prayed the following words. Receive this blessed scapular as he put it over my shoulders. Receive this blessed scapular and ask the Most Holy Virgin that by her merits it may be worn with no stain of sin and may protect you from all harm and bring you into everlasting life. I wear the Holy Scapular of Mount Carmel because it is a devotion to Our Lady. It is part of true devotion to Mary. It is part of our holy faith. That devotion to our Blessed Mother is not optional. Devotion to the Mother of God is necessary for our salvation. Those who will not have Mary for their mother will never have God for their father. It is also to be held by all true believers that anyone who practices true devotion to Our Lady until the end will definitely be saved. In fact, true devotion to Our Blessed Mother is a sign of being chosen. If you love Our Lady, it's a sign that you are predestined, that you have been elected, that you've been set aside and chosen. In regards to the brown scapular devotion, we offer Mary two things, and in return, she guarantees us two things. The first thing we offer Our Lady, and this is so important, especially as a religious, we offer her public honor, with an emphasis on public. When we consecrate ourselves to the Mother of God, when we receive solemnly at the foot of the altar the brown scapular, the sign of our consecration to her service, and when we promise to wear it, 
to honor her all the days of our life. We are no longer satisfied to love her in only a hidden or secret way, but we make it an open profession that we love her openly, publicly. Wearing Mary's habit, her garment of salvation, is a public witness that we are consecrated to her. Our piety, our devotional love for the Virgin Mary begins in the heart that is true, but it must extend outwardly in a public presentation. A person, any person, would have little or no devotion to Mary if he were afraid to show it. How many Catholics in the Western world today are afraid of devotion to Our Lady? Our dearest Savior stated that he would be ashamed before his Heavenly Father in Heaven of the cowardly Christian who was ashamed of him before men. And so it is with Our Lady. The timid, fearful servant who is afraid to honor her publicly will not be rewarded. Rather, that servant who, enrolling himself under her banner, shows that he is proud of wearing her garment. He is proud of wearing her scapular, proud of belonging to her, and of being loyal to his queen and of his loving mother. That servant will be rewarded. Not only do we offer her public honor, but think of it, we're also offering her continual honor, habitual honor, because it never stops. Other pious practices are attached to certain times and to certain places, but the devotion of the brown scapular belongs to all times and all places. Thanks to that little habit that we wear, Wherever we are, whatever we are doing, Mary never sees us without seeing upon our bodies evidence of our devotion to her. Always and everywhere, our scapulars plead for our protection and salvation while also telling her that we love her. But no... Know that if we generously offer Our Lady public and continual homage through the brown scapular, she will never be outdone in generosity. You can never outdo Our Lady in generosity, but she will guarantee us protection and salvation. And for those who might suggest that there's people who have too much devotion to Our Lady, St. Louis de Montfort once said, the great slave of the Blessed Virgin, he once said, num quad satis, never enough. You can never honor Our Lady enough. God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Ghost have honored her immeasurably. You will never reach the honor that they give to her. Num quad satis, you can never have enough devotion to the Holy Mother of God. She will protect us in danger. She will help us to die well. What a grace. What a grace to have final perseverance and to die a good death with the sacraments being provided. She will quickly and powerfully help us even after death if we dwell in the church suffering also known as purgatory. If Mary protects us, whom shall we fear? She who crushed the head of the serpent of Satan, why should we fear demons if she's on our side? Therefore, our brown scapulars are a sign and, yes, a guarantee of salvation, for Mary will never fail to help us. Again, we hear her words, her solemn, infallible promise where she said, Whosoever shall die invested in this habit shall not undergo the torments of hell. 
When Mary takes upon herself such an extraordinary obligation, she has bound herself to take care of us. It's as if she would say to each of us, as long as I see you clothed in that brown habit, which is the special mark of all my beloved children, if I see this evidence of your love for me, it will inspire me to show my tender love for you. And yes, Our Lady would perhaps add these words as well. Should you have the misfortune even to incur the anger of my divine Son, even then, if I should see you with your brown scapula, that symbol of your alliance with me, I will never abandon you. I will obtain for you in the treasures of heaven a grace so powerful that it will soften your heart and it will change your will and you will come to Christ. There is no doubt, no doubt in my mind that her kindness towards those who wear the brown scapular will ensure that you will receive the last sacraments, that you will be given the grace of true contrition for your sins, that you will avoid the fullness of divine wrath if you are clothed with her garment and die with Mary's holy habit upon your bodies. As many of us know who have had devotion to the brown scapular, there are many consoling stories that are told in holy books which show the real protection and, yes, salvation that the scapular brings. In fact, in the very day that Our Lady gave the brown scapular to St. Simon Stock, that same holy friar was soon called to the bedside of a dying man who was in great despair. St. Simon Stock placed his large scapular over the dying man, and in turn, immediately, that man repented and died a friend of God. That night, the dead man appeared to his loved ones, saying the following, quote, I have been saved. I have been saved through the most powerful queen and the brown scapular of that man as a shield, unquote. Another story states that a holy man that had received his scapular had eventually had that scapular fall off. And as he placed the scapular back over his neck and shoulders, he heard demons yelling, Take it off! Take off the habit which snatches so many souls away from us. Then the same holy man made the demons admit that there are three things which the demons are most afraid of. Number one, the holy name of Jesus. Number two, the holy name of Mary. And number three, what are the demons most afraid of? Brown scapular of Mount Carmel. But the scapular, the holy scapular has also aided men in being saved from physical dangers too. In the year 1845, an English passenger ship was in the midst of a very dangerous hurricane while at sea. A Protestant minister, together with his wife and children and other passengers, struggled to reach the deck in order to pray for mercy and forgiveness as the end seemed very near. But among the crew of the ship was a young Irish Catholic who had the true faith. This young man opened up his shirt, took off his brown scapular, made the sign of the cross over the angry sea, and threw the scapular into the ocean. At the very moment that that scapular hit the sea, the wind calmed, and only one wave washed over the deck, and it brought the brown scapular, which landed at the feet of the young man. The Protestant minister and his family had observed all that happened. They questioned the Irish Catholic young man, who in turn told them of the Holy Virgin and her scapular and her promise of protection in time of danger. 
And so impressed was this Protestant family that they were determined to enter the true church and to enjoy Mary's protection as well. And a final example of the power of the brown scapular, both spiritually and physically. A Carmelite priest in Germany published this story in a German magazine in 1957 about how the scapular saved a home from material fire. An entire row of homes had caught fire in a German city. The pious inhabitants of one home, seeing the fire, immediately fastened a brown scapular to the main door of their house. The raging fire and its sparks flew over their house and around it, but their family house remained completely unharmed. Within five hours, 22 homes were completely reduced to ashes and ruins. But there was one house, one house alone, that stood unharmed amidst all the destruction, the brown scapular upon the front door. Literally, thousands of people visited this house in the weeks that followed to see the place of the disaster where Mary had protected one special home. We know that Our Lady had promised St. Simon Stock that hell fire would not affect those who wore the brown scapular with devotion. But who knew that she would also protect her true servants from earthly fires as well. Our Lady has often emphasized the importance of the brown scapular. Consider that her last apparition to St. Bernadette at Lourdes occurred on July 16th, 1858, the very feast of Our Lady of Mount Carmel. And yes, at this conference, in honor of Our Lady of Fatima, at this conference that will help us prepare for the upcoming 100th anniversary of that glorious apparition in May, of Our Lady of 1917, we should know that after the miracle of the sun, on October 13th, after that miracle which showed the sun dance, the sun changed colors and nearly come crashing to the earth as if to destroy it. After this miracle, Our Lady of Fatima appeared and she appeared in such a way as she was the Lady of Mount Carmel. And she was holding out a brown scapular to the 70,000 witnesses as a means of protection and salvation for men who would have to endure the horrors of the 20th and 21st centuries. We should know that Our Lady requested five things at Fatima. Five things requested. Number one, the consecration of Russia and every individual to her Immaculate Heart. Number two, receiving Holy Communion and making the proper devotions on the first Saturdays of five consecutive months. Number three, the offering of daily sacrifices for the conversion of sinners. Number four, praying the Holy Rosary each day, especially for peace in the world. And five, five, wearing the scapular of Mount Carmel as a sign of one's consecration to the Blessed Mother. Now, it is true that Our Lady did not use the words, but she held her scapular out of the skies in her last appearance at Fatima. Sister Lucia of Fatima, one of the visionaries explained that Our Lady did so because, and this is Lucia's words, she wants everyone to wear the brown scapular. Sister Lucia then said further, quote, the rosary and the scapular are inseparable and that the reason for wearing the scapular is because, again, Lucia's words, It is a sign of our consecration 
to the Immaculate Heart of Mary, unquote. Now, before I conclude this conference, on the brown scapular of Our Lady of Mount Carmel, it is important that I touch upon a controversial topic. I like controversial topics. And this controversial topic is the Sabbatine privilege. Some may not have heard of it, but it is an important topic to cover before we end. In other words, the Sabbatine privilege, that special privilege for those truly devoted to the brown scapular, which consists in their early release from purgatory on the very first Saturday after their death. Now, of course, this is a controversial topic only in the minds of liberals. Only in the minds of modernists who dismiss the voice and authority of tradition. Believe it or not, and this is true, many Dominicans today openly deny that our Blessed Mother gave the Holy Rosary to St. Dominic directly. And yes, today, many Carmelites deny the very existence of and stories connected with the life of St. Simon Stock, as well as dismissing the Sabbatine privilege as being nothing more than a fable. But for those modern and prideful men who would question such ancient and holy traditions, I would simply ask them, I'm sorry, were you there? Were you there more than 800 years ago when these events, these wondrous, wondrous events occurred? On March 3rd, 1322, 71 years after Our Lady appeared to St. Simon Stock and gave him the brown scapular. 71 years after that, Pope John XXII issued a document with full papal authority. In this papal document, John XXII declared, the Mother of God appeared to him and urgently recommended the brown scapular the Blessed Mother then added a special promise and privilege for those who were devoted to her brown scapular. Our Blessed Mother says, quote, When they have shall left this earthly life and entered into purgatory, I, their mother, will visit them and will console them the first Saturday after their death. I shall deliver thence my children, and I shall find there and will lead them up the holy mountain of life eternal. Unquote. The words of the Mother of God. Pope John the Twenty Second wrote at the very end of this papal document the following quote, This holy indulgence I therefore accept. I confirm and ratify it on earth, just as Jesus Christ has graciously granted it in heaven on account of the merits of the Virgin Mother of God, unquote. The Sabbatine privilege, Sabbatine means Saturday, the first Saturday after their death, will be brought out of purgatory for those who had true devotion to the brown scapular. This Sabbatine privilege was approved and has been confirmed by 16 popes, including the great Pope St. Pius V, the Holy Dominican Pope during the very council known as Trent. And furthermore, Pope Benedict XIV of holy memory declared that the faithful should rely on the Sabbatine privilege and that neither the original papal document of John the 22nd, nor the apparition of the Blessed Mother could be denied by any. But I should add that some 
brown scapular enthusiasts wrongly claim that just wearing the brown scapular earns you everything, including the Sabatine privilege. The Sabatine privilege, that first Saturday, first Sabbath after their death, clearly affirms that this early release from purgatory applies only to those who wear the scapular along with further conditions. The conditions of the Sabatine privilege are the following. Number one, the wearing of the brown scapular of Our Lady of Mount Carmel. The wearer has to be officially enrolled in the brown scapular. This official reception is made by a priest who places a scapular on the person and then recites particular prayers according to the official ritual. This needs to be done once in a person's life. Number two condition, obeying, obviously, the sixth and ninth commandments and living a life of holy purity and chastity according to your state in life. Number three, the daily recitation of what is called the little office of the Blessed Virgin Mary, which can still be purchased today. Instead of reciting the little office, however, persons who cannot read should observe all the fasts observed by the Catholic Church and in addition abstain from flesh meat on all Wednesdays and Saturdays of the year except when Christmas falls on one of those days. Friday is obviously a day of abstinence in addition. The faculty, to continue, the faculty to change this condition in order to gain the privilege was granted to all confessors by Pope Leo XIII of holy memory. And according to his decree, any priest with diocesan faculties may change the requirement of reciting the little office of the Blessed Virgin Mary to some other pious work. Ordinarily, it's the daily recitation of the 15 decades of the Most Holy Rosary. Most lay persons simply have to ask this approval for this substitution. In conclusion, the brown scapular or the blessed habit of the Virgin Mary teaches us to be innocent. It teaches us to flee from the near occasion of sin. The scapular is the seal of the alliance that we have entered into with Our Lady and the particular sign of those who have adopted her as their mother. It exhorts us to watch over all our actions, to be pure in all our intentions. We are to grow in holiness and to edify our neighbors by our good example as Christian gentlemen and Christian ladies. Mary recognizes. She recognizes those children who wear and live the spirituality of the brown scapular. It is a sign that you have been chosen. It is a sign that you have been predestined. It is a sign of your election. True love is a choice. And the Virgin has chosen you. And you, with your brown scapular, have chosen her. Therefore, when we are invested, when we are clothed with the brown scapular, it is a sign that we should put on the virtues of charity, humility, modesty, justice, etc. All those virtues which can make us saints, the chosen of God. How can we thank Our Lady enough for her goodness to us? that we have been brought into the family of Jesus, Mary, St. Simon Stock, and the entire Carmelite religious family. However unworthy we are, we have received this privilege. And we pray that Our Lady may always be a mother to us, that wearing her blessed habit 
may always be our defense, a sign of protection, and yes, a sign of salvation. Oh, that we may be clothed in it at the moment of our death, and that this holy habit of Mary, this brown scapula, may be changed one day into a white vestment of glory in heaven above. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. Amen.